Selenium has been really integral for our testing here. Um, we started out, basically I'm, I was a one-man team for a year and a half here at Mozilla. Um, I started with the IDE and I'm gonna share that part of the story with you and then uh, after which I'll turn it over to Raymond and he can talk about the RC and the uh, grid integration, so. Um, the three things we'll talk about primarily are where we were, uh, where we are today, and where we'd like to be in the future. Um, there are three main projects that we have here at Mozilla. Um, we have any number of projects at any given time, but these are the three concurrent projects that we always have cycles for. Uh, Mozilla.com obviously is our flagship site. We have addons.mozilla.org, which hosts 6,000 plus add-ons for four different applications. And we also have the Firefox support website, which we're also um, rebuilding into a more modular code base for um, not only Firefox, but other um, Gecko and, and Firefox uh, derivative applications. Um, where we were a few years ago, um, and this kind of also tells you where we are today, is we do a lot of testing on both um, our own browser across many different versions and everybody else's browser. So we do do a lot of IE6 testing, unfortunately, but um, <laughs> it's the nature of the beast if you want to convert IE6 users to Firefox users. Um, you have to support those users in the conversion both on the, the support website and in case there's a problem with Firefox and their only other alternative is IE, you have to support that, that experience. Um, of course, we also run with the latest versions of Chrome, Opera, Safari, um, and, but as you guys know, probably many of you know, uh, testing manually these websites across many different browsers can present quite a challenge. Um, you've got layout testing, which is not the least of which, but you also have a, a fair a number of um, functionality to test. So that brings us to what we started with, or what I started with, really. Um, that's the IDE. So I started with uh, the Facebook Rock Your Firefox application, which is now defunct. Um, but this was basically a way for Firefox users to share their add-ons with their friends and to cross-promote and cross-pollinate uh, add-ons across the Firefox ecosystem. Um, the problem with the IDE that uh, I ran into was that it only worked on Firefox. So again, this was not a problem with the Rock Your Firefox application, but as I tried to move this model to other web applications like Mozilla.com and Sumo, um, I found that I couldn't really run my tests, obviously, in IE6, IE7, and IE8, and, and all the other different browsers. Um, it really only works if you have a small set of tests. Um, it's also faster than manual testing, obviously, but it's prone to breakage because you have steps in sequence, and if any one of them fail, then the, the rest of the test fails. Um, and, and I say this based on my, my writing in Selenie. So I didn't write in JavaScript. I didn't use the go to cell idejs extension. Um, which other people on my team have done since then. And the, the biggest thing for me was that my boss wanted, okay, he said, so you have tests, that's great, show me your reports. Um, I didn't have reports uh, over time, I had reports instantly for each run. I also had no way of really, um, I could write a cron job, I guess, to, to keep running these tests, but it became a burden for me to manage these IDE tests over multiple applications and figure out a good way to get histograms of results over time. Um, so we need a change, and that's uh, something that Raymond helped uh, the rest of the team with. So this brings us to where we are right now. Um, we're using Selenium Grid in Hudson to run our tests. Um, we have two Mac Minis running VMs for XP, Vista, and Ubuntu. Um, we have remote controls for all the major browsers that we test on. Um, we write our tests mainly in Python. Um, we check them in after review into SVN, and then have Hudson pull our SVN repository every five minutes for check-ins. Once there's a check-in, it, it checks the change sets and runs our tests on the grid. Um, we have a couple of modules in Python because we have a lot of contributors and we don't want them rewriting like XPath or their own functions. So we have a set of functions in XPath defined in certain files that they can just pick up from my SVN re repository and write test for. Um, setting this up, we ran into a couple of problems. Some of our staging sites are under, we have self-signed certificates for our staging sites. and. 
for Firefox um, IE, we've, we have a way of actually making it work. But recently with Chrome, um, Chrome has a screening model where you can't actually run tests that are on a staging site with a cell sign certificate. As it actually just fails. So we had problems with that. Um, other problems we had were sometimes the Selenium grid, for some reason, well, when you're running a test, would just either lock and you can't get like other tests to run on it. So you actually have to log into the box and make some changes. Actually bad. Um, we learned a couple of lessons um, through our setup. We found out that it was very good to write um, reusable test code um, if you had a lot of people working on testing your product. We, we have contributors all over the world and we needed to get them um, good test code and not have to review everything that everybody submitted. So we did that. Um, we found out that running tests as often as you can was very important. We caught a lot more um, regressions that way. Um, making very good use of our XPath and CXS locators also helped us very well. And one thing I'll mention as well is to is to cast the net wide. So you want to run your tests on as many browsers, as many current browsers as possible, or as many supported browsers as possible. Um, sometimes you'll expose things that you didn't know. For instance, uh, I believe we ran a Selenium test uh, on AMO that checks the most recently um, added collections to your to your add-ons account. And um, because that relies on local storage, um, things browsers like IE7 and earlier would actually fail with that. So, so you can actually learn things along the way. And um, sometimes that breaks your tests pretty badly. And other times that just forces you to write code more modularly and, and actually makes the code more robust. So, you actually want to extend the model we have now for our add-on site to all our other projects and encourage more people to contribute. Um, we also want more coverage for our Selenium test than we have right, right now. So right now we have a lot of failures. Um, there's a reason for that. There's growing pains and uh, we're still trying to figure out basically our classes and what things to include as common functions and what things to exclude. Um, we're a seven person team now so we have quite a lot of discussion about the right way to do things which is normal and healthy. Um, the build failure that we're seeing right now, I think, is because we're issuing um, a command to Selenium to actually execute two URLs at the same time, and Selenium is actually, through its Jetty servo applet, servlet, sorry, is, um, is actually failing and returning a 500 internal server error, but we'll fix that. We just didn't want to fix it right before the demo, because it might be even worse. But, um, mm -hmm. Hudson also gives us a nice histogram of, of check-ins over time and also tells you the build completion over time. Um, you can see a list of files that are included in a smoke test or a basic functionality test or full functionality test. Um, it's not meant obviously as a replacement for SVN where you've got you know commit history and things like that. It's basically just a really really smart cron job with excellent reporting and um, interface tools. <coughs>